Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to have a look at this little gem. This is the E50, the German tier 9 medium tank. A tank that is quite often overlooked and you know what? It's an amazing tank. It really is. It's got, well, it's got a fantastic gun, it's got pretty decent mobility and it does have really trolly armour especially on its turret. This is a really, really good, good tank. Come on, a beautiful tank. To get your paws on the E50, which is a tech tree tank, you need to follow down the Panther line. So if you enjoyed playing the Panther at tier seven and the Panther two at tier eight, then you're really, really gonna like playing the E50, the tier nine upgraded version of the Panther two. Now the Panther II in its own right in tier 8 is a beautiful, beautiful tank, but this one just has a little bit more. It, okay, it doesn't have the same type of mobility as the Panther II, but it does have a pinpoint accurate gun, as you can see there. It manages to hold its own quite easily against tier 10s, as you can see here. It has a pretty decent reload, to be honest with you. I mean, it's not that long considering the amount of damage that you are outputting. Okay, admittedly it doesn't have the best reload time for a tier nine medium, but just under seven and a half seconds, that's not too bad. And when you are dishing out the damage that this thing dishes out, then boy, you really can't go wrong. I mean, the damage output on this thing it is about 350 IN Alpha with its standard ammunition. That's not even looking at its premium ammunition or even its HE. So it's got one of the best damage outputs. It's got pretty mediocre penetration. Hasn't got the best DPM, but, and this is the kicker, for a medium tank, it does really have trolley armor. This is a tank that is pretty noob friendly, if I'm being honest with you. In fact, if you're looking to sort of progress into tier 10, then you cannot go wrong with learning the basics of the E50 after learning how to play the Panther 2. Dropping yourself then into the tier 10 version, the E50M, because believe me, you're gonna find that tank a lot easier to get on with than say the likes of a Leo 1. But don't, again, don't get me wrong. I mean, the Leo 1 is a beautiful tank as well. Problem with the Leo 1 is its lack of armor. And if you're a newer type of player, then you're really gonna struggle in that tank, believe me. Whereas this one is gonna give you a little bit more protection. As I say, for a medium tank in tier 10 and at tier nine, for the German line, you've got either the E50 followed by the E50M or the Leo PTA followed by the Leo 1. Personally, if you're a new player, guys, you need to follow down the line of the E50. And don't start jumping into Leos until you feel slightly more comfortable with the kind of playstyle that they bring. And I'll be honest with you, I see a lot of new players with low battle counts and low win rates rolling out in a Leo 1. And they really, really struggle. Whereas if they were to roll out in this tank first, and then progress themselves to the E50M, then they would not find themselves so much in a world of pain because this one is a lot less traumatic and a lot less difficult to get around the battlefield in than a Leo. I love this tank, I love the E50. However, it's again, not one of those tanks that you can just stick on the front line and hope to get away with everything. Doesn't work that way. You still need to know the parameters of this tank. And some of the salient points you need to understand about it are as follows. Whilst it's got a super, super tough turret, it doesn't exactly have good gun depression. It's only five degrees. That happens to be just about enough to give you what you need, but you will come on stuck. You can't really stick this thing hull down behind a ridge and hope for the best because you just won't have the gun depression. It has got whopping 20 degrees of elevation, which, whilst nice, is only helpful when you're shooting things above you. The thing about this thing is that your aim time is less than two seconds. I mean, it is a super accurate gun, as I say. 
It's got not the best DPM and not the best penetration, but it's got amazing damage. And it's even got a pretty decent view range. It's the fourth best medium in its tier. It's got good mobility. You can get around the battlefield nicely. And as I say, and I can't emphasize this enough, it has trolley armor on its turret. You will bounce on occasion. But the thing that truly makes this tank is like its counterpart, the Leo, the gun is super, super accurate. It's one of those German, you know, amazing feats of engineering guns. So don't be shy to roll out in this thing. In fact, if you are venturing into the world of the upper tier mediums in the German line, seriously guys, avoid the Leo at this stage. Cut your mustard, as they say in the E50. Hear you nothing that I say. So, take it from me, if you are venturing for the first time up into those higher tiers in the mediums, then the E50 may be one that you should be looking at rather than the Leo. I've been Fujit. By all means, comments and everything below. Give me your thoughts on this absolutely beautiful tank. And until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about. And this is my parting shot about the E50.